Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video I'm going to give you an introduction to machine learning. I'll have future videos where we drill into and take a closer look at specific machine learning algorithms and how they work with coding examples, but this is just going to be an overview. Machine learning basically is algorithms that can learn from and make predictions on data. Types of machine learning problems, you have regression, classification, clustering, and dimensionality reduction are four common machine learning problems and let me explain what each one of these is. Regression is basically trying to predict y given x. So if we're given an independent variable x, we're trying to predict a dependent variable y. And there may be more than one, there may be multiple independent variables with differing correlations to y. So we want to try to choose the best variable that gives us the most accurate prediction of y. So here you can see we have x and y plotted on this graph and we try to draw a linear regression line between x and y. If they have a strong linear correlation it gives us a more accurate prediction. And there's also nonlinear regression which is a little more complicated. In classification problems we're given a training set of data where we know the type of each object. So we're given a set here of objects that we know are circles we know what a circle looks like and then we're given a set of squares and we know what the squares looks like. And then we're given an unknown object and we say well let's try and figure out what this is. Well since it's most similar to the circles we say Z is probably a circle. So we're trying to identify what category or population a new instance belongs to. And we use that training data to figure out which ones it's most similar to. To identify or guess the type of a new object. In clustering, we don't have a training set. There is no training data. All we know is a bunch of different characteristics of each object. And based on those characteristics, we can plot those objects and we can, we can group or cluster them together with other similar objects by using their attributes. So in this case, we have a yellow, a blue, and a red cluster of objects. And then we, we have this new object, Z, and we're trying to decide which group that should belong in. And it probably belongs in this yellow group because it's closest to all these yellow objects. Dimensionality reduction is a way to reduce the number of variables we're using to solve machine learning problems because sometimes the number of variables involved can be as big as 100. And on really large data sets, you don't have enough compute power to actually analyze 100 different variables. And some of them may be irrelevant anyway. So dimensionality reduction is a way of reducing the number of variables used to solve the problem. We're going to choose the variables with the greatest variance and the greatest orthogonality for our data. Supervised versus unsupervised learning. Supervised learning just means that you have a training set of data of correctly identified objects. So we know the type of each of these training set. So for example, classification or regression. In unsupervised learning, we don't have a training set. We just have a bunch of raw data and we need to try to cluster it. So some of the machine learning algorithms that are most commonly used, decision trees, support vector machines, random forest, k nearest neighbors or just KNN, k-means, naive bays, neural networks, and deep learning. There are many, many more, but these are probably some of the most popular ones. And in this video, I'm going to give you a little more detailed explanation of a few of these, uh, but I don't have time to go into all of them. So I'll have future videos that explain more these in more detail, but let's take a closer look at, at K nearest neighbors. So K nearest neighbors is a pretty simple algorithm for machine learning. It basically, for each object, we look at the other objects that it's closest to, and we say it's probably one of those. So in this case, let's say we have a yellow X, and we see that it's three nearest neighbors, are all red circles. So we know that this new unidentified object is probably also a red circle. That's a pretty easy identification. And in this case we have a black X and the three nearest identified objects are blue squares. So we can assume that X is also a blue square. And in this case you can see that K equals 3 because we're looking at the three nearest neighbors. Now we can adjust k to different values. It, usually it's an odd number, but it can be any value. Uh, whatever gives you the best result. So it could k could be 1. We may only look at the 1 nearest neighbor. Or we may be looking at 9 nearest neighbors or 100 nearest neighbors. Typically though, the neighbors are weighted based on the distance. We look at an inverse distance from our new object x. 
So the farther away a neighbor is, the less vote or the less influence it has in determining what X is. And in this case, the green X, we can see that the, there are two near neighbors that are red, but then the other nearest neighbor is blue. So in this case, we would conclude that X is probably a red circle. So that is, in a nutshell, how k-nearest neighbors works. Support vector machines are pretty simple. We just draw a line between objects of known types. And then any object on one side of that line is going to be identified as the type of object that it's clustered with on that side. And any object on the other side is going to be identified as the object that is clustered with on that side. So it's used for image classification, facial recognition, expression classification, etc. Support vector machines is also one of the simplest machine learning algorithms. K-means is a clustering algorithm, and it groups objects into K sets. In this case, we can see three different sets, a yellow, blue, and red set. So here K is equal to 3. It groups these objects into K sets, and it minimizes the average distance of the points in that set from the centroid. So we calculate a centroid for each set, and we try to minimize this centroid by assigning objects to this set. So here we have three sets, and we've grouped the objects closest to each centroid. And we're trying to minimize the average distance of a set's points from its centroid. So in this case, let's say this yellow square, we wouldn't want it to be in the blue set because it's much farther from this centroid. And it's also very far from the red centroid. But it's pretty close to the yellow centroid, so we think this yellow one probably belongs with this yellow set. Some of the most popular machine learning tools out there, a lot of people are using R, MATLAB, Weka, um, Python, Scikit-Learn, SKL. And then uh, also in the Hadoop ecosystem, we have Mahout and Spark. And those are mostly programming languages or libraries. And then on the cloud side, Amazon has uh, Amazon ML. Google has TensorFlow and Prediction. And Microsoft has uh, Azure ML. So these are all cloud tools for machine learning. These are the most popular machine learning tools. So that wraps up this video on machine learning. I hope you learned something from it. And like I said, I intend to have more detailed videos and including some code to drill into exactly how machine learning algorithms work one by one. So I hope you'll come back and check those out. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.